Hello guys and welcome to episode 14 in my Go.C Sharp How To series. Today we're going to have a look at custom signals and we're going to make this simple application here. We have a player we can move around and whenever he steps on the trap we're going to send a custom signal that will decrease the health of the player. All right. You can download the source code on my GitHub page. The link is in the description. And a bit of heads up, this is for Go.3.5, the LDS version, and not for Go.4. And so you can understand signals a bit better. I'm going to give you a simple analogy. Let's say we have a chat server, and it has four rooms. We have gaming, music, sports, and cooking. And we have a couple of people, and they have different interests. Let's say this boy, he likes sports and he likes cooking let's say this man he likes sports and this teenager up here he likes gaming only and the girl up here she likes gaming music and cooking so let's say that this girl writes something in the music channel then none of these other three guys are going to get that message because they are not part of the music channel in the same way if the boy writes something in cooking then the girl is going to get that message as well because she is part of the cooking channel. Signals work in the same way. We set up a signal, and in order to get the message from that signal, we have to connect to it. And when anybody is sending a message in that signal, then the ones that are listening for the message is going to get it. All right. I hope this made things a bit more clear for you. I have prepared a bit in advance. We have a main scene, we have a player scene. And this guy is a kinematic body 2D with a sprite and a collision shape 2D and a health label. The label is going to be on top of the player like so. We have a trap scene as well. We have the trap sprite. And when the player is walking on the trap, we're going to sprang the trap and show the spikes up like so. We have an area 2D so that we can detect when the player is walking on the trap. And we have two sound effects, one for the spikes up and one for spikes down. We have no scripts attached, so we're going to start with making the custom signal script. So create the folder assets, and the folder shared, and the folder custom signals. And here we're going to right click on this folder, and I'm going to click on new script. It's going to be custom signals.cs, and click on create. And we're going to open this script up. We can start by deleting everything in here. I'm going to type in public, delegate, void, and then the method for the signal. And I'm going to pass in a parameter as well. You can have as many parameters as you like. We can add this guy here, string damaged by. And even more if you like. So it's simple to add parameters. In order to tell go dot that this is a signal, we have to add the signal attribute on top here like so and this is all the code we need to set up a signal inside of the custom signals singleton we're going to minimize we're going to go here to product product settings we're going to go to auto load you click on the folder go to assets shared custom signals select the custom signals file and click on open and click on add and we have now set up the custom signals as a singleton we can click on close. We can save the main scene by pressing Ctrl S. Let's go to the player scene. We're going to right click on the player. We're going to click on attach script. Click here on the folder. And inside the player folder, we're going to put this in the scripts folder as player.cs and click on open. Click on create. First of all, we're going to add a custom signals variable in here. And to access the custom signal singleton, get the node, custom signals that we created. They go to slash root, then custom signals. And we will have access to the singleton. Make sure you have the same name in your script as you have here in the auto load. Otherwise, it won't work. All right. Next, we're going to connect to the damaged player signal. And we're going to connect it to this clause, which is the player. And whenever this signal is triggered, we're going to run the handle damage player method. And we need a few variables more for this guy. We are going to need the amount of health the player has. And we also need access to the health label. 
And if you have a look in the go.editor, we can see we have the player and we have the health label right here. So that's why we just simply type health label. We're going to access that guy. And we're going to initialize the health label as well. We're going to set the text of the label to the current amount of health that the player has, which is this guy up here. And next, let's implement the handle damage player method. This guy right here, which is triggered whenever the damage player signal is emitted from somewhere. And here, we declare it exactly the same as we have here in the custom signals. We take in the damage amount. And whenever the signal is triggered, we're going to decrease the health of the player with the incoming damage amount. And we're going to update the health label about the player. Next, we're going to go back to the go.editor. I'm going to save the scene. I'm going to go to a trap. I'm going to right click the trap and click on add that script. I'm going to go to the scripts folder here. And it's going to be called trap.cs and click on open. And click on create. So first of all, up here, we want to have how much damage the trap is going to inflict on the player. We're going to have our custom signals. And in the render method, we are going to connect to them right here. We're also going to add a few more variables as well. We're going to have the trap sprung sprite. And we're going to have the sound effects for the spike up and the spike down as well. And we're going to add them inside of the render method, like so. Now let's go back to the golden editor. And we are now going to set up the area 2D. And what we're going to do is to go here to node. And this is the built-in signal system used by Godot itself. So this is not the custom signals, but the built-in ones. And because the player is a kinematic body 2D, we're going to go here and double-click on the body entered signal. And we're going to connect it to the trap script. And we're going to rename this to a bit more C-Shop standard. Select all the text. Right-click. Copy. And click on connect. And in here, we just type private void on area body enter and what we are expecting here is a player i'm going to call it body like so and inside of this guy we're going to do a couple of things we're first going to have a fail save here to make sure that the body is not null if it is then we're just going to return out of the method and not do anything otherwise we are going to emit the damaged player signal here so we take our custom signals the single tone we have and you type emit signal, then you go and check which signal you want to emit. And right now we only have one, so we're going to emit the damage player signal. So we say name of custom signals dot damage player, and then we pass in the trap damage, which corresponds to our custom signal right here, which is damage amount. So we're now emitting the signal. So now that anything that's listening to the signal is going to catch it, and in our case, it's going to be the player because we are connected to the damage player signal right here. And the handle damage player method is going to be run inside of the player script here. And we can adjust the variables as we like when this is triggering. Then we're going to show the sprung trap sprite. So basically we're just going to toggle the sprite right here. And it's going to show the spikes up. Like so. And we're going to play the spikes up sound effect at the same time. Next, we need to have the second signal as well here on area 2D. When the player is exiting the trap, you can double click on this guy, green and this to a bit more C-Shop standard. Select all the text, right click and copy, and click on connect. And you type in private void, you paste this guy in, and type in player and body. And when the player is exiting the trap, we have our fail safe right here first. Then we're just gonna remove the spikes up. And we're going to play the spikes down sound effect. So this is now the complete code for the trap. Next, inside of the player script, we are going to add some movement code. And I'm not going to go through this right now. There are many tutorials out there. So I'm just going to put the code in here for you. You can check this out later, but I'm not going to go through that code right now. And let's minimize. And we can now save the trap. We can go to our main scene. I'm going to click on play. And we have our character right here. And I'm walking around here. Walking on the spikes. And we're sending the custom signal 
triggering that the health shield go down. Like so. Alright guys, this concludes this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and see you in the next video. Bye for now.